economic sanctions designed to keep this in the diplomatic framework for moving forward. U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis has reaffirmed the U.S. is working towards talks with North Korea. He came to the defense of Secretary of State Rex Tillerson at a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing on Tuesday, explaining that President Trump and his top diplomat were on the same page and looking for a diplomatic solution. I believe that Secretary Tillerson uh, is accurately stating that we are probing for opportunities to talk uh, with the North. All we're doing is probing. We're not talking with them, consistent with the President's dismay about not talking with them before the time is right, before they're willing to talk. Uh, so I do not see the divergence as strongly as, uh, as some have interpreted it. Uh, at the same time, the President, uh, I think, has a responsibility to ensure that we go into this with our eyes wide open with numerous Republican and Democrat administrations in the past having uh, been disappointed in this initiative. I think it is a dynamic uh, balance as we try to go forward with a solution, but at the same time ensure we have military options. Uh, just a final point. I don't want to dwell on this, but uh in these situations, and I think you're aware of it, the, the possibility of miscalculation, misinformation, misinterpretation is uh, very real. And uh, communication, even back-channel communications to, to not negotiating but simply to be able to send messages, is, is do you think that's vitally important? Because the President seems to be disparaging even those types of um, you know, messaging channels. Uh, Senator, I think the President dispatching uh, Secretary Tillerson to Beijing here within the last several days uh, to carry messages and to look at uh, the way we can work with them uh, is uh, the most uh, accurate answer to your question, that in fact this is part of a whole of government uh, integrated effort. Uh, that we have underway right now, and that's what Secretary Tillerson was carrying forward for the president. He added that President Trump had guided Tillerson and himself to pursue diplomatic efforts, including initiatives with China, and that Tillerson's trip to China last week showed that integrated effort. It was during this trip to Beijing that Tillerson made the comments that sparked this current controversy. He said the U.S. was in direct communication with North Korea, the first admission of its kind for the Trump administration, but that so far Pyongyang had shown no interest in talks. A day later, President Trump tweeted that Tillerson was wasting his time trying to negotiate with the little rocket man, the moniker Trump has given North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. He also pointed out that being nice hadn't worked for 25 years during three administrations. The White House also stressed on Monday that there have been no talks with Pyongyang over its nuclear program, but that the only conversations to have taken place are on bringing back American detainees. It's not the first time the White House and the State Department have made conflicting statements, and Matt has said that he does not see the divergence as strongly as some have interpreted. Morning. There are some news reports this morning that I want to address. First, my commitment to the success of our president and our country is as strong as it was the day I accepted his offer to serve as Secretary of State. President Trump's America First agenda has given voice to millions who felt completely abandoned by the political status quo and who felt their interests came second to those of other countries. President Trump's foreign policy goals break the mold of what people traditionally think is achievable on behalf of our country. We're finding new ways to govern that deliver new victories. Our job is now to achieve results on behalf of America, and we are doing that. We've created international unity around our peaceful pressure campaign against North Korea, including influencing China to exert unpre unprecedented economic influence on North Korea. At the Riyadh summit, the President rallied Muslim-majority nations to assume new responsibilities for stopping terrorism. NATO members are now contributing more to shared security. And our approach to South Asia, and specifically Afghanistan, 
means building upon our relationships with India and Pakistan to stamp out terrorism and support the Afghan government in providing security for their own people. And ISIS's fraudulent caliphate in Iraq and Syria is on the brink of being completely extinguished thanks to an aggressive new strategy led by the President. What we have accomplished, we have done as a team. Similarly, Secretary Mnuchin has levied economic sanctions on North Korea and related entities. Countries must increasingly decide whether they will do business with North Korea or with the community of peace-loving nations. Ambassador Haley has spearheaded and achieved enormous success passing the toughest UN sanctions to date on North Korea. General Mattis and I communicate virtually every day, and we agree that there must be the highest level of coordination between our diplomatic efforts and our military efforts. You can't have a stronger partner than a Secretary of Defense who embraces diplomacy, and I hope he feels he has the partner he needs at the State Department. And this is just the beginning of the list of partners and friends across the government who are all working for the American people. There's much to be done, and we're just getting started. To address a few specifics that have been erroneously reported this morning, the Vice President has never had to persuade me to remain as Secretary of State because I have never considered leaving this post. I value the friendship and the counsel of the Vice President, and I admire his leadership within President Trump's administration to address the many important agendas of President Trump, both from a foreign policy perspective and a dip diplomatic, a, uh, I'm sorry, a domestic objective. Let me tell you what I've learned about this president, whom I did not know before taking this office. He loves his country. He puts Americans and America first. He's smart. He demands results wherever he goes, and he holds those around him accountable for whether they've done the job he's asked them to do. Accountability is one of the bedrock values the President and I share. While I'm new to Washington, I have learned that there are some who try to sow dissension to advance their own agenda by tearing others apart in an effort to undermine President Trump's own agenda. I do not and I will not operate that way. And the same applies to everyone on my team here at the State Department. When I wake up in the morning, my first thoughts are about the safety of our citizens at home and abroad. There's no more important responsibility I carry with me than ensuring that Americans are safe. Providing for the security of the United States must be the number one goal of our American foreign policy. President Trump and his administration will keep moving forward as one team with one mission, doing great things for the United States of America to make America great again. Thank you. Is that the only thing that you consider to be erroneous in that article? I think it's the most important element of the article is to reaffirm my commitment to this role that President Trump's asked me to serve and to dispel with this notion that I have ever considered leaving. I have answered that question repeatedly. For some reason, it continues to be misreported. There's never been a consideration in my mind to leave. I serve at the appointment of the president, and I'm here for as long as the president feels I can be useful to achieving his objectives. Mr. Secretary, do you agree with Secretary Mattis that the United States should stay in the ICPI? We'll have a recommendation for the president. We're going to give him a couple of options of how to move forward to advance the important policy towards Iran. As you've heard us say many times, the JCPOA represents only a small part of the many issues that we need to deal with when it comes to the Iranian relationship. So it is an important part of that, but it is not the only part. And I've said many times we cannot let the Iranian relationship be defined solely by that nuclear agreement. I'm just, I'm not going to deal with petty stuff like that. I mean, this is, this is what I don't understand about Washington. Again, you know, I'm not from this place, but the places I come from, we don't deal with that kind of petty nonsense. And it is intended to do no, nothing but divide people. And I'm just not going to be part of this effort to divide this administration. Secretary, did you speak with the President about the 
president about the report? Did he ask you to make a statement? Or is I have not spoken to the president this morning. I think he's on his way to Las Vegas, is, is my understanding. Yes, I believe we do. You know, I think the Pakistan relation, it's, it's very, Pakistan relationship and U.S. relationship is extraordinarily important regionally. And as we rolled out the South Asia strategy, we spoke about it in a regional context. Uh, it is not just about Afghanistan. This is about the importance of Pakistan and Pakistan's long-term stability as well. We have concerns about the future of Pakistan's government, too, in terms of them. We want their government to be stable. We want it to be peaceful. And many of the same issues they're struggling with inside of Pakistan are our issues. So we think there is opportunity for us to strengthen that relationship. We're going to be working very hard at all levels, from the uh, State Department to the Defense Department, to our intelligence communities, as well as economic commerce uh, opportunities as well. So it really is a regional approach, and Pakistan is critical, I think, to the long-term stability of the region. Thank you very much.